In the mid-2000s, Hazleton, Pennsylvania was in steep economic decline, with jobs dwindling and solid income scarce. In response, lawmakers pushed through a series of ordinances that would make English the official language of the town and ban landlords from renting to the undocumented. Those ordinances never came into effect. And 10 years later, the city is 50% Latino and seems to be on the rebound. It's a story that's becoming more common across America as small towns face a choice between preserving their identity and saving their economy. I'm afraid so. <laughs> it's a busy time for Bob Curry. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Mayor? Thank you. How are you, buddy? He's the president of the Hazleton Integration Project, a community organization that works to make Hazleton a welcoming place for immigrants. This weekend is their annual fundraiser. Our whole concept was develop educational, cultural, and athletic activities for kids from economically disadvantaged backgrounds. And yeah. that's really what we try to do. The center offers programs to help new immigrants assimilate. There's bilingual education and cooking classes. There's even a brand new computer lab. It was created and paid for by Hazleton's hometown hero, Cubs manager, Joe Madden. I was concerned because there was this great rift between the Hispanic community and the Anglos. And in my mind, and my thought was the city's gonna die. The city's gonna die relatively quickly if we don't do something about it. Not exactly a popular opinion at the time. Very unpopular. I mean, uh, listen, I, if you're a major league baseball manager, you get criticized a lot. And a lot of times people you tell you're doing something wrong. Normally, if you're getting that kind of feedback, you're probably doing something right. It just takes a while for it to really uh, grab some uh, traction. In a way, Madden and Curry's vision for Hazleton has already come to pass. In the years since town leaders tried to restrict immigration, the once depleted city has been reborn as a hub of Puerto Rican and Dominican family life. There are Latino-owned barber shops and grocery stores. The population, now 25,000 people, is on the way back up. And jobs are returning, including large warehouse employers like Cargill and Amazon. But these changes haven't come easily. As in much of the Rust Belt, older residents feel alienated. Some even say they're afraid to go downtown, although they didn't want to say it on camera. One of the things I hear a lot in talking to people this morning is just a lot of people who just feel like there's just a general feeling that I can't go down to Hazleton anymore. It's not my town anymore. There is that feeling. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. That feeling is there. Um, it's not the same Hazleton it was, you know, 30 years ago. I think this is a perfect example of what you saw in blue-collar towns across America. Lou Barletta is the local congressman. He was mayor when Hazleton passed its hardline immigration law, something he says was focused strictly on undocumented immigrants. You say the illegal immigrants have brought with them drugs, they brought with them crime. Gang. He was one of President Trump's earliest supporters. If you think that illegal immigration isn't a big part of why Donald Trump won in this area, you'd be mistaken. There's no question. They're seeing their wages being depressed. They understand that the, what the problem of illegal immigration means to the worker. Uh, when they see companies leaving, uh, it affects these type of towns. Barletta has a point. Hazleton's improvements have come largely at the expense of its older residents. But the improvements also pose a conundrum. If Hazleton's economy grew thanks to an influx of immigrants, would it have happened at all without them? Those factory jobs wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the fact that we had an influx of labor. And that labor happens to be younger and it happens to be Latino in many cases. Francisco Torres Aranda is a local businessman, originally from Mexico City. The population of Hazleton went from 20% Latino to nearly 50% Latino over the last 10 years. Yeah. And in so the next 10 years? The next 10 years, it, it may, may become a majority Latino community. That's just the reality of demographics in the United States. It's casino night, the Hazleton Integration Project's star-studded fundraiser at a nearby country club. Everyone's there. Bob Curry, Congressman Barletta, Coach Joe Madden, Cubs megafan Bill Murray. It's a picture of harmony. But the future of Hazleton isn't really in their hands. The town's changing in ways that they can't control and won't always be around to see. Madden visits Hazleton often, but he of course doesn't live there anymore. His kids, like much of their generation, don't either. Bob Curry's children have left too. I mean, do you ever wonder if there's a place for the, the old Italian-Irish community? I mean, is that, is that part of what you're fighting for here, to sustain that place? No, what, what we're fighting for is equality among every group. 
Well, outside it still feels like a pretty divided city. I mean, that's definitely the case. Well, if someone walks in the door and says, I don't believe in what you guys do, we want the opportunity to change your mind. And actually, I'm not going to be the one to do it, because I could talk till I'm blue in the face. But I'd rather see you talk to grades three, four, five, six, and seven, and then tell me what it is that we're doing so bad.